Okay, so I'm going to be answering every question that has ever been asked by Edexcel on nonlinear graphs here. And as usual, all of these questions are available in the link in the description, and it's fully hyperlinked, so it will take you through all these different bits. So we're going to start off with quadratics, we'll do some on cubics, we'll do exponentials, and then at the end it's kind of like the general types of graphs that we've got. Now, they do come up in some other areas, but we're just going to be uh, focusing on, the, just, you know, kind of like just the drawing of these graphs to begin with. So with quadratics we've got here, we've got this very easy first question. Brogan needs to draw the graph of y equals x squared plus 1. Here is her graph. Write down one thing that is wrong with Brogan's graph. So the one thing I'm going to write down is when you do a quadratic, you shouldn't join them with straight lines. They should be joined with a curved line. So one thing that's wrong, she has joined the points with straight lines. She has joined the points with straight lines, not a curve. So let's double check we've got that right. Yep, so she should draw them freehand, shouldn't use a ruler, it should be a curve, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now this is where I'm going to zoom out a little bit on here so that I can show you how to use something on the calculator. I'm gonna try and fill in this table of values and because it's a calculator one, I'm gonna take you through a mode that most of your calculators will have, especially if you've got the one that your school has recommended. If you go to mode, there should be something that looks like table. Now my one says table down there and it should come up with something that says f of x. All you need to do is type in this thing that we've got here, just the x part. And to type in x, you're gonna press alpha first and then you should see these little red letters above it. If I press it above the bracket, I'm gonna get an x. And I wanna say that it is x squared. So I'm gonna say x squared. Now I'm gonna say minus x, I'm gonna press alpha again, and then I'm gonna press minus six. Now, when most calculators press equals, it then says g of x. So you might want to do another one at the same time, but you really don't have to do that. It says in my one, press equals to go to the next bit. So just press equals if g of x comes up. If it doesn't, your calculator is perfectly fine. It's not broken. And then it says start. That means we want to say what value we're going to start at. So we're going to start at minus three, and we're going to go all the way up to, we're going to end at three. And then it says step. Now the step is how much is it going up by each time. The amount that it's going up each time here is one. So I'm going to just put that in as one. Then all we need to do is read what the graph says. So it tells us the values that are going to go in the table that we have here. We've got six, zero, four, etc. They, the, those are the values that go in this table. So it goes six, zero, minus four, minus six, minus six, minus four. And if you need to, you can always scroll down and our last one that we've got there is zero. Okay, so it's really useful to know how to do that on your calculator. It then just says on the grid, draw the graph from minus three to three. And then we've got something about using your graph to find estimates to the solution, which could belong in one of the later bits I've got, but we'll answer it here. So minus three, that goes with six. Uh, minus two goes with zero. Minus one goes with minus four. Zero goes with minus six. One goes with minus six two goes with minus four and three goes with zero. Now they want you to do this as freehand as possible. So I'm going to try my very best. Now the bottom, you do not want to go across like that. Instead, you need to make sure that it has this little bump at the bottom and it's as smooth as you could possibly draw it like this. Okay, it then says use your graph to find estimates to this graph that we've got here. Sorry, this equation that we've got here. Now, this is the curve. This is one of the curves. The other one that we're going to do is when it's equal to minus 2. In other words, when y is minus 2. Now, when y is minus 2, I'm going to do this in red here. That is when we have a horizontal line just like this. So hopefully that's going to straighten up. Good. All we need to do now is just read the x coordinates. Now they will give you like a margin of error for this, but I think one of the x coordinates looks like it's about 2.6. So one of the things we're going to say is that x is 2.6. And I would say this other one here, it's a bit difficult to read, but I'm going to say or x is equal to minus 1.5. Let's check we've got these right. So they've got 2.6 and 1.6, but they actually accept anything between 2.5 and 2.7, and between minus 1.5 and minus 1.7. So definitely we would get these accepted, but they do accept a range of things that we've got there. Okay, I'm gonna do this one a little bit quicker. So this time I'm gonna go back here. If you wanna clear it, you just press clear, and I'm gonna change the graph so that it has a x squared plus x, and it's a minus four. And again, I want it to go from minus three to three and it goes up in ones. So it goes two minus two minus four, minus four minus two, 
2 and 8 are such a time saver, especially for a calculator paper. So we're going to go minus 3, which goes with 2. Now be really careful on these axes that we've got here. You'll see that they go up each pair of squares represents one. So if it helps you to like add some of these extra parts on, then definitely do that. So minus three is going to go with two, which is there. Minus two is going to go with minus two, so it's going to come down to here. Minus one goes with minus four. Zero goes with minus four as well. One goes with minus two. Obviously, I could have put these extra markings on here that might have made that a bit easier. Two goes with two, and three goes with eight, which is going to be there. So we're going to try and draw this nice and smoothly. So I'm going to start at minus three. So I'm going to come around like this. Again, I want there to be like a bit of a bump at the bottom, and then coming up here. Now, it really doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to be like a rough idea of this. This one says, use your graph to estimate the solution when it is equal to zero. Well, last time we made it equal to a line that was minus two. We were saying, when was it minus two along here? We're now just gonna be saying, when is it equal to zero? In other words, where does it cross the axis? So it's gonna be here and here. I think those values look about minus 2.5 here and 1.5 over here. So the estimates for this are gonna be that x is 1.5 or x is minus 2.5. Now, hopefully they'll give us like a range of things they would accept here. So they have got anything between, uh, maybe it's because I've not drawn it as accurate, but it's got, these are the values that fill in. Um, do not ruin the microphone from this value. Exact 1.56 or minus 2.56. Well, I think we would probably get these still because I think maybe it's just the way that I've got these drawn. So they've said that the answers are minus 2.6 and 1.6. Normally they give you a range of values, which I'm a bit surprised to see here. So um, interesting. I think in the more detailed version of this, it would probably let us have these. Okay, let's keep going. We're going to plot these ones that we've got now. So I'm going to clear this and it's an x squared minus 2x, so x squared minus 2x plus 2, and it wants to go between minus 2 and 4. So I'm going to change it between minus 2 and 4, and I'm still going to go up in ones, so I can fill in that table really quick. It goes 10, 5, 2, 1, 2, 5, 10. And then we're going to draw the graph, and then we're going to try and do the estimates for this one as well. So we have minus 2 goes with 10, Minus 1 goes with 5, 0 goes with 2, 1 goes with 1, 2 goes with 2, 3 goes with 5, and 4 goes with 10. Now this time the bottom is actually where that cross is. So when I draw this, and I hope this would have been easier if I had it printed, but having to do things on a screen is the best way for me to record it. And this time we want it to be equal to 4. So I'm going to go across and I'm going to draw a line at 4 and we'll find out what the x values are for this. So it looks like we've got one of them here, which looks about minus 0 0.75 and one of them here, which looks about 2.75. So we've got a 2.75 and a minus 0 0.75. So I'm going to say that x is minus 0 0.75 or x is 2.75. So they do give us these range of values, which we did hit, and I think we did. Yep, so you do give a range, which is why I think in that previous question it was odd. So I would definitely expect there to be a range. Okay, now we've got some other properties of these quadratics, and it says we've got the line, sorry, the graph of y equals f of x is on the grid. Note that it's a non-calculator paper. Write down the coordinates of the turning point. Well, this is the turning point right here. That is 1 minus 3. When it says the roots, that means where it crosses the axes in these two points here. Where is it crossing that axis? And that looks like it's crossing um, at minus 0. Point, let's see if I can zoom in. That looks like a 2.75, and that one looks like a minus 0. 0.75. Isn't that the answers for the previous question? So the estimates for the solution are 2.75 and minus 0. 0.75. And then it says, use your graph to find an estimate for f of 1.5. This means that we're saying x is equal to 1.5. Look at this. x has been replaced with 1.5. So you go to 1.5 on the graph. I'm going to zoom in for this. You go to 1.5 on the graph for x. You go down, and then we read that across, 
and it will tell us what we think the y value is. Now careful, each of these little mini squares are representing 0 0.2, so it's minus 2.8. So that's all it's saying. Read off if x is 1.5, find out what the y value is, because that's what it's telling us with this function notation. So we've got 1 and minus 3, minus 0 0.75 and 2.75, and minus 2.8. Now, I'm going to take a little pause there. Oh, no, because yeah, because we're now moving on to cubics. So the rest of this video that I'm going to split it into two parts is going to be the remaining parts, which are not quadratics. So come back for this next video if you want to finish this off.